and we'll just go from there, all right? Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Jeremy Marquez here, J Marketing. We call you close more real estate listings and now power prospecting. Uh, I'm here getting ready to do a, a coaching call. Um, I have one of my uh, prospecting and cold calling students um, on the on, on the phone here, and in a moment I'll give him an introduction. But just to give you guys a quick rundown of what I plan to talk about and what we're going to do here during this call, um, we're going to go. We're, uh, Tommy Quinn has been making cold calls, and uh, he's been following me for a while, and he's in the trenches now. He has Red X, and he's prospecting. Um, expired for sale by owners and doing some geo leads and you know he's, he's starting to put in the work he's a newer agent and he's starting to get results and over the weekend um, I had a chance to listen to a couple of his calls during this call we're gonna play that play one of his calls um, and we're gonna talk about it step by step of things he did great things he could do better and things maybe he just want to not even try not even continue to do and it just it's all simple stuff guys um, but the thing with cold calling and prospecting, it's something that you have to continue to do on a daily basis consistently to be able to get the solid results from. And Tommy, Tommy's doing that. Um, so, Tommy, how's it going, buddy? Going pretty good, man. Right on, man. Yeah, like I was telling everybody and like I was telling you, um, I had a chance to uh, listen to one of the calls. Now we did have a we did have you on last week and we had some audio issue, um, but we shouldn't have those issues uh, today. Um, today we're going to basically go over the, uh, one of your calls that you had from over the from over the weekend, uh, give you some pointers and you know some some critiquing basically. And for guys, if if you're watching this and you're uh, you're at a, you're starting to prospect and you cold call or if you have a team or an assistant that might need some training This is the type of one-on-one -on -one coaching and training that you're gonna get with power prospecting Okay, and there's a link um, in in the live feed uh, To to my to my calendar uh, To my services and as well as our group that we have cold calling isn't dead where we share a lot of information and help each other get better so I encourage you guys if you're watching this to uh, join the group to like and follow J Marketing, uh, we call you close and Power Prospecting, and be able to turn those notifications on. So when I go live, you get notified, and you're able to absorb as much content as possible. Um, so let's give everybody a quick update, Tommy. Uh, when we spoke last week, we we're kind of just talking about the basics and how you got started, and you know, in some of the things that you were dealing with. Uh, mostly, uh, some of, we talked about an objection that you were getting from for sale by owners. But why don't you just tell us a little bit how the prospecting is going and um, how, how you think you've improved uh, since you started doing this about a month and a half ago and following uh, my coaching and training. Yeah, uh, so, you know, I get a lot of, uh, especially when I'm calling for sale by owners, I get a lot of people that are saying that they to avoid paying commission. Uh, and, you know, in the end, usually for sale by owners, that's in about 30% less of what, uh, you know, an agent listed property is to get. And so, you know, I'm just trying, one main thing I've noticed is I try to hear them when they answer the phone, so like their tone of voice, you know, if it's nice and quiet, I try to follow that same tone. You know, you don't want to sound like fake, like, you know, oh, hey, how's it going? Hey, Tommy Clinton, you know, you want to match their tone. And I've noticed uh, doing that, it kind of opens them up to want to at least have a conversation with you. I mean, sometimes they don't, and that's okay. But uh, it's helped out a lot, and you know, having um, have a list of objections right in front of me. So you know, when they throw an objection like I'm going to relist with the same agent, or I want to relist at the same price again, I have something to go off of. And uh, you know, because main thing is you don't want don't you want to be in control of the, of the conversation, and I don't want it to you know there be too long of a pause which, you know, I wouldn't have thought of, and, I mean, yeah, it could be better going free. 
great. That's awesome. So, uh, are, so I'll remind everybody, you're, uh, how often are you prospecting? Are you in there daily? How much time do you spend? I'm in there daily. I'm Monday to Friday, and then I just started doing uh, about an hour on the weekends. I mean, I, I, you know, I'll be in front of the computer for two hours, maybe. You know, I get kind of burnt out after, you know, an hour and a half straight of cold calling. But, um, you know, the weekends, I used to not do any cold calls on it. I went for a session on uh, Saturday and Sunday over the weekend, and uh, that's where I got two of those leads from. So, you know, I, I've noticed on the weekends, Awesome. Hey, Neil, I see your question in here, and we'll get to that here in a moment. Neil asked us, how do, how do we overcome the FISBA objection, preview, uh, objection previewing because of COVID-19? And that's a great question. And in a moment after we go over Tommy's call, I'll, get to, uh, I'll ask Tommy if he's hearing anything like that and what he's been doing and what I suggest as well, because that's a great question. And I'm sure everybody that's using the phone to generate leads and appointments uh, when it comes to uh, real estate, they're hearing the COVID-19 ob objection. And we'll, we'll definitely get that. So while we're talking and going over your call here, Tommy, have that in the back of your mind uh, where we can give some suggestions to the folks here. And so, and I'll give them mine as well in a moment. So um, there's a call that Tommy had over the weekend uh, with an expired listing. And I'm going to go ahead and play that call. And then um, what, what we'll do is we'll, we'll discuss that call and just kind of break it down. Um, I'm going to play it all the way through. Well, I may stop it in, 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 in during the call just to talk about it a little bit, or I may let it play through. Again, guys, bear with me. This is one of the first times I've done a coaching call like this. And, uh, you know, I'm not a professional videographer. I'm good at making cold calls and teaching others like Tommy how to do what I do. Um, so I, we do these calls and the technology stuff to be able to share and to be able to help you guys get better at your prospecting and your call calling. So let me go ahead and uh, attempt to play this call. I'm going to try initially to do it on my phone here and then if we need to, um, I can, I'll can i do it on my computer. I wasn't sure about the audio, so let's just play it and see what happens. Um, Tommy, before I play it, um, you, you know what call I'm talking about, right? Yeah, one uh, uh, I'll run it. Yes. And Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was an expired listing? Yes, it was an expired listing. I, they listed it, uh, I think it was on the market for almost six months. It sounds like to me it may be listed a little uh, a little too high, but I mean, it's, you know, you've got oceanfront views, it's a custom house, two beds, two baths. Um, I mean, if the backyard walks right on, on the beach, uh, he wasn't working with a realtor at the moment, and... Yeah, went from there. Okay, well, let's go ahead and play the call, and uh, we'll talk about it, okay? Perfect. Give me one moment. Hi there, this is uh, Tommy Quinn from Coldwell Banker Realty. How are you doing today? Okay. So I'm calling about your Ocean Parkway property in Bolinas, and uh says on my side, and sometimes my records can be wrong, it says it's expired, and I'm just curious if you guys are still trying to get it sold. So, again, I told you guys that I'm going to kind of pause it and talk about it. Um, and I do this all the time, and I was telling Tommy before the call that there's some of the stuff that I'm going to train him and coach him that even sometimes when I'm calling guys, because I still pro I, I prospect and cold call on a daily basis, I, st I do little things that I try to improve on on a daily basis, but they're just habits that I continue to do. And um, you know, one of those things, and if we can get great at minimizing non-words like ums and ahs and things like that, little stuff like that. And I still do it sometimes, even like right now when we're talking, it's more my way of thinking. But sometimes some sellers that we're calling, you know, they may just judge us. And those first 15 seconds 
are huge to be able to keep them on the phone. So we want to try to minimize ums and ahs. So that really comes down to us knowing our scripts and knowing where we're going with the call. And I'm going to continue here. Um, not at the moment. No, not at the moment. You guys taking it off market? Is it you know just not working out for you uh, with the realtor you're working with? What's uh, what's going on? Um, with the property? Yeah, we're we're taking off the market. We're um, we're actually living here. Um, because of COVID full time, hmm. um, we were, it was on the market, um, or um, it had been on the market for um, a little over a year. And, oh, wow. Um, um, and uh, um, so. Okay, you guys notice how Tommy's listening and allowing the seller to talk? That's perfect. You always want to be able to allow them to talk and not and do your best to not interrupt them uh, because getting a seller to, to open up to you on a very first call is huge. So let's go ahead and continue to listen. Our realtor's um, uh, contract expired and we decided uh, to uh, take a break from all that because we're living here. It was a lot harder to show and everything um, and the market and everything. You start off. You know, great, but it's um, died down, I think. I mean, the market's just as hot as ever. I mean, right now, you know, with interest rates at like the historic low, and despite its low inventory, I mean, we're seeing houses flying off the market faster than they're being put on. So, I mean, quite honestly. That's a great knowledge there, Tommy. But one thing that you want to do with these expired listings is when you're calling, you know, you know when you're calling based from Red X or Vulcan or Mojo, you know it's expired, okay? Um, you see that it came off the market. Um, you saw how long it was listed. And I usually don't do homework but while before I call, but while I'm calling and he's speaking, I can simply glance over and see, okay, it expired yesterday. It was on the market for six months. Um, and the uh, this is the agent. So, so in my mind, I know that stuff. and instead of uh you know what i'm gonna do with these calls is i i'm gonna assuming that the information that i have is accurate okay uh, the information that red x provides or mojo provides or vulcan provides i'm assuming that's accurate until the seller corrects me and the reason i'm doing that is because i know the direction i want to go with this call and the, the way Tommy, his approach, there was nothing wrong with that, but you really want to, you, you, you already know that it expired. So in, instead of, you know, talking about the market and things like that, one thing I'd like to do with expired listings is, you know, hey, it looks like one, two, three, Cherry Lane just came off the market. I was calling to see if you got any feedback as to why the property didn't get sold. And, and don't ask them a lot of questions. You want to be specific with your questions, and then you want to kind of be quiet and let them talk to you to see if they got any feedback as to why it didn't get sold. Because and then because in your in your mind you know that typically there's going to be three main reasons why a property doesn't sell. One, the conditioning of the property, so the shape that that property is in, the marketing on the agent, you know, in the, whether the agent did a good job marketing the property, and then also and then mostly what it usually comes down to is pricing usually uh regardless if the agent did a good job or not with the condition of the property the reason why a property is not selling right now in this market and that goes around the united states not just the bay area not just los angeles not just florida it's not selling typically because it's overpriced okay and we'll get into the call a little bit more and that, that will that will be unveiled uh, but that's a great question to open up with is did you get any feedback as to why the property didn't get sold? Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, in today's market, sometimes you either get a buyer's or a seller's market, but it's really a both uh, both types of standards. So, you know, the only reason we're seeing homes that aren't getting sold is uh, contingency that's on the property that maybe a buyer doesn't like, or it's just priced too high. That'd be the only reason. Good. And it sounded like you said your house was on the market for a year. I mean, that's just... Um, that's great, Tommy. However... Instead of giving him like a multiple choice of like, well, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, asking that question, we just got any, did you get any feedback as to why the property didn't sell? Does that make sense, Tommy? Yeah, definitely. Okay. You know, it's too long for it to be on the year, to, for it to be on the market. I mean, you know, you get the most qualified buyers 
interested in the property in about 14 days. And after that, you know, at least what I recommend to my clients is after it's been on the market for two to four weeks, if you haven't gotten any bites, then we need to come back to the drawing board and talk about a possible price reduction. Yeah. Well, we weren't, we're not really, we're not willing to. And this is when the price comes out. And this right here is why it's important to listen always to what they're saying, because they're usually going to give you everything that you need to know. Um, go lower than, than we had it. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, we'd like to. We think it's worth more. Uh -huh. um, it has some. Ero it has some um, issues, erosion issues up front. Okay. Like cliff. Mm -hmm. um, nothing. Nothing. Um, so, guys, the, his seller is telling us himself that the property. Um, he's basically telling us there's a pricing issue. He's not saying none of those words, but he's saying that he's not willing to go lower than what it was when it came off the market. Okay, so what that tells me as the agent, as the broker, as the ISA, as the appointment setter who's calling, it tells me that this seller is not a truly motivated seller. It's telling me that he he's not willing to take his agent's advice to be able to lower it in order to get it sold. And to, to what that means basically is that he's not truly motivated to sell in this market for th at, at this time. So we're gonna let him continue to talk, but that's what it's telling me. Um, and uh, so he's basically giving us the ammo or the information we need without even asking. You know what I mean, Tommy? Yeah, definitely. That some other houses who have sold for twice as much as ours, and we have yeah. an amazing View, uh -huh. if you're familiar with the area. Or oh, Bolinas, yeah, man. I go to the beach. I'm always, I'm in, I'm in Stinson mostly, but Bolinas, yeah, I do. And you can tell that he's proud of his property, that he loves his property. So asking a simple question like, so what's the condition of the property? And then you just be quiet and you let him talk about his property. He's going to end up spilling all of the information that you need. Do you know where, where the house is? I haven't been to the house particularly where yours okay. is. I haven't done business out there any time soon. the last house on the point. Really? So, Great location. You know, we, um, we did a... We did a lot of work when we bought the place for practically nothing. Mm -hmm. um, erosion work, um, and people haven't been able to really grasp that the work has been done. They kind of think that more needs to be done okay. when it doesn't. Um, you know, not now. Eventually, yeah, um, more work is going to be needed to be done um, eventually. But uh, who knows? I mean, it's, it's we're told it could last for years forever other people say it's just gonna it's gonna go so um hmm. tommy do you remember the price point of this property when it came off the market yeah two million uh, and a quarter two million and a quarter is what it ended at when it came off the market guys keep that in mind yeah uh, we just haven't found a buyer that's willing to uh you know understand and what's going on with it and, oh definitely um, I mean, you got to market it at a house like <laughs> Sorry about Take that. The risk that we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's um certainly you know, and even though the seller is not talking about the stuff that you really want him to talk about you just got to be very careful not to overstep what he's saying and allow him to talk Tommy and I think you knew that yeah. when you when you did it you probably you you realized that um, I do it all the time and. It's just one of those things, like you're not sure if he's done talking or you kind of want to steer him in another direction. But with a seller like this in a multi-million dollar property, even though you still are in control of the call, you want him to be able to talk and you want to be careful because if you over talk him when he's going to tell you some good info, it may be hard to draw him back in the conversation. Does that make sense? I noticed I did that a lot towards the end of the call. Okay, that's fine. And this, bro, you, Tommy, you've only been doing this for a few weeks. You're brand new at this. So just the fact that you got a guy with a two and a quarter million dollar property talking to you for as long as you have, that's a win right there. So let's continue with the call. Amazing place and we, you know, we enjoy being here um, a lot, but, you know, and we're, we're not really anxious or, you know, desperate to sell it. For so not only did he tell us that he's not willing to go down on the price, but he just told us that he doesn't need to sell that he doesn't have to sell, which in my mind tells me exactly one of the main reasons why this property didn't sell is because of the pricing. And usually when it's priced too high, it's gonna be because the seller is difficult to deal with or it's an unmotivated seller. Sure, sure. We can get rid of it because we, we're happy here, but down the road we would like to, um, 
retire in a place that has maybe a little more property for a garden, it's a little more secure, possibly have a pool. He's telling us what his what he's looking for. So he's telling us what he's looking for in his next property, which is stuff to keep in mind. If you just, if you end up selling his property, you want to be able to have that as ammo as well. Um, yeah. And um, so that's our intent. But um, you know, uh, um, yeah. yeah. And Tommy, you said that this property was listed for 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 a year. Uh, yeah, a little over. A year. Okay. So uh, the information on Red X said on the market for a little that the, it was like three hundred and something days. Yeah, it was oh. like three hundred and eighty days. Oh my god. Okay, okay, and uh, let me just let me let me, con- let me have him continue here. But guys, it definitely sounds like it's a pricing issue. Um, now that's not Tommy's job on that first call. His his job is exactly what he's doing is be, is being able to establish a relationship, and that's what he's focusing on right now. Later on, he'll be able to run numbers and determine if it's overpriced and that type of thing. But like when I'm calling, because I call four realtors and brokers as their assistant, you know, it's a little bit different approach because I can say, hey, you know, it's I'm not an appraiser by any means, and I can talk about the pricing and I can ask questions without having to give a a, a professional opinion because I'm not the professional. I'm uh, the the team member calling for the agent or broker. However. Everything that I'm telling you can apply to your calls as well as an agent or broker, or if you're an assistant, you under, you get this, you get what I'm saying because it's a little bit more like the middleman type role compared to Tommy on this call. He is the guy. Okay, so let's continue on. We also live in San Francisco, and but we've been here since March 13th. And, oh, nice! I'm actually from San Francisco. <laughs> Small world. So, so. He didn't really care. <laughs> he was like, yeah, big wow. A lot of people are from San Francisco. And that's fine, though. You're trying to relate with him, Tommy. And that's what you should be doing. But when he said I live in San Francisco as well, that's telling me that these guys are fairly wealthy. Okay? Uh, if they have this $2 million property in Bolinas and they have a property in San Francisco, they have a little bit of money. And so, again, may not be as motivated of a seller that we're looking for. So we'll continue on. Well, yeah. So, um that's kind of our story. So we're we're not looking. We may um, we may decide um, after you know maybe after this whole thing is over or um, down the road a year from now we may decide to put it back on the market. But right now we're not. We're not. Sure. Sure. I'm going to bring it back, bring that back a little bit because I missed that last part. He's basically telling us when and if and when he plans to relist. It's a little more secure, possibly have a pool, um, and um, so that's our intent. But um, you know, uh, um, yeah, we, have, we also live in San Francisco, and but we've been here since March 13th. And, oh, nice! I'm actually from San Francisco. <laughs> Small world. So. So yeah, so um, that's <laughs> kind of our story. So we're we're not looking. We Wait may um, we may decide uh, um, after you know maybe after this whole thing is over or um, down the road a year from now, we may decide to put it back on the market. But so down the road a year from now, okay, that's saying that you know they're they're well they're living in the property and they're planning on taking a little bit of break. So I know that, but my follow up, and when we'll talk about that, Tommy, I'm still going to be continue to follow up, and you know, probably every every month or so. Um, but here's the thing: one good question to ask when they say I'm not going to relist for six months or a year or that type of thing, you know, Mr. Seller, if if I could put together a strategy that will show you step by step how to get this property sold in the next 90 days. Would it be worth 15 minutes of your time to meet with me so I can go over that with you? So, yes, he said six months. Yes, he said a year. However, there's nothing wrong, especially because you're six, five minutes into the call. The guy is talking to you. He's not going nowhere. Would it be worth 15 minutes of your time to sit down with me so I can go over step by step with you of how we'll get this property sold and net you the amount that you were looking to net, right? And then, and then you shut then you shut up see what he says he may say well maybe we can talk about that then you go for the appointment and then if not then you just continue with the call okay let's continue with the call right now we're not we're not 
sure, sure. So, like, what influenced you, you know, the most to hire your previous agent? Is it, like, a family friend, someone you knew? Because, I mean, you know, you're, you know, like you said, it being on the market for a year, I mean, maybe it just was Great question, Tommy. You want to know how they decided that re- the, the past agent. And you don't want to necessarily badmouth that agent because you never want to do that because I will come back to bite you. But the good question, yeah. the, the way that you're asking that question is great because it's good to have that information. Let's get, let's let him see what, let's see what he says here. The market is right. Maybe he didn't put it in, you know, all the, you know, social media, media platforms and print online in the paper. I mean, sometimes it just is a marketing mistake on the agent's end, which is a shame because I mean, from the pictures I'm seeing to be now, when you asked him the question, when you asked him, how did he find him? How did he come in contact with her? Then he should have been quiet and let him answer instead of giving him options, you know? Yeah. When you ask questions, instead of, because I do it sometimes too, I almost make it seem like I'm making it a multiple choice question for him to be able to choose of different options. Instead of saying, hey, you know, it looks like you were listed for a year with blah, blah, blah. How did you come, how did you find the, the past agent? And then just let him talk, okay? Beautiful view, beautiful house, you know, prime location. I don't see why it wouldn't sell. Yeah. Um, it's a local realtor. Um, yeah, a, um, a friend, but it's also um, the realty that um, sold us the property. Uh, mm. Not the same agent, but but um, that agent has, has somewhat retired. So he said that he kind of is a friend with this person. It's a local agent, and it's the same brokerage that they bought the property from. So that's kind of telling me that, and we'll let him talk here, that he's not super committed to this this company. Um, and the only reason they really worked with them is because they bought the house from them. And that really doesn't say a lot when it comes to track record and what they're going to do for marketing and things like that. Let's see how Tommy handled it. Um, and, um, you know... We felt at the time that it was someone who, you know, knows the area, who knows what's going on, um, who, you know, can attest to, you know, all the other issues that in other places have had, but, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, um, but yeah, we would, we would, you know, look into probably another realtor. Boom! Green light he just gave you we would probably look into another realtor okay and so he gave us some awesome information there that we need to have that that's 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 great basically saying that it's a green light for tommy or anybody else that earns their business okay um if we decide to put it back on the market you wouldn't you saying you'd go with the same realtor no we wouldn't okay okay we would look into a different realtor and um, I think she did what she could. She's also, you know, she's also very, likes to be very upfront and honest, mm-hmm. which we agree with. Um, and Straight shooter, no BS, and Tommy, Tommy's good with that. You know, we wanted to be, but um, I don't know, maybe that was the way to go. Cause people just came in and said, oh my God, you know, we... Um, the disclosures that we had, um, a lot of them are, are the disclosures of the work that we had done, the major. When he said that people came in and said, oh my God, that'd be a good time to ask Tommy. Well, what was the specific feedback that you got from people that came by to look at the property? Okay. Okay. Because then you can get an idea, yeah. because you're going to have a couple of stories here. You're going to have the story that the seller has, because it's his property, his baby, his pride and joy. He's not going to say that there's really a lot of stuff wrong with it, um, you know. And, and okay, so you it sounds like you had some showings for the people that came by. What was the feedback that you guys got? The work that we had done. Yeah, they looked at those as like, oh, you know, this still needs to be done. Well, no, they didn't see buyers didn't seem to understand that that had already been done. Had already been done. Um, yeah. And so, compared to other places that sold for, you know, um, eight, uh, eight Ocean Avenue. So this is another good opportunity for for Tommy to go for the appointment. And when he's saying, 
all this stuff that's been done, the, the, the potential buyers are saying one thing, the seller is saying another thing, you know, hey, Mr. Seller, you know, I'd love the opportunity to lay eyes on this in person. And then you roll into going for the appointment. Little ends like that are sometimes ways to get the appointment set or at least get the seller thinking about meeting with you at the property to show you some of the stuff they've done, walk you through it, that type of thing. And even if it's not going for a full listing appointment, getting face to face and walking the property and, and having a relationship with a seller like this is huge when you just called them out of the blue and it's a two and a quarter million dollar property. So for, well, for over four million, it's a bigger property and it's closer to town, yeah. Um, Terrace, so for quite a, both of those places are nightmares for erosion. <laughs> oh um, yeah. And I'm so, familiar with Terrace, I and mean, that's I got a couple buddies that live out there. So you know, plus you get that erosion that with living right by the sea. You know, I've heard that things uh, they start to rust a little bit faster, and you know, you get the wear, you get things that wear and a little bit quicker than usual. But like you said, you put the work into the house already, so it's not like it needs to be done. And you know, it's just interesting that people seem to have squealed when you showed them. Well, it didn't sell for a reason, right, guys? Yeah the work you did on the property thinking that it still needs to be done. I mean, that's just, uh... Yeah, or they didn't want to, you know, it's too much of a, a risk. I mean, everybody loves the place. I mean, everybody was, you know, thought the house is, the house is amazing. The house is, um, you know, um, the view, you know, that's certainly star. But then when it comes to, like, oh, well, it's, you know, we have peers, you know, these, 35 um, piers that go down 35 feet and they're starting to show at the top, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that's scary, but they go down 35 feet into bedrock and they're, you can't really do any more work like tiebacks until they're like, till it's 10 feet. Um, and we're, you know, maybe at four feet in the, in the 10 years of it's been, since been done, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Well, you know, it's, um, I mean, everything sounds in place, you know, it just doesn't, uh, you know, um, I guess where I'm coming from is, you know, would you be interested in maybe, you know, me, you know, us keeping in touch and, you know, every so often I could give you a ring and, you know, just chat about the, uh, the real estate market and where it's going and where we see it's currently at and, you know, um, I don't think, I'm pretty sure I mentioned, you know, I work for Coldwell Banker in Petaluma, uh, you know, the most productive and biggest office in Petaluma. You know, we uh, do quite a bit of business both here in the North Bay, out in Bolinas, San Francisco, uh, Napa, you know, we're pretty much all around and, uh, you know, we've got a pretty solid marketing team and if you're, uh, you know, willing to, you know, at least let me show you what we have to offer when you are in the market of getting your house sold. So it couldn't have hurt before Tommy, he basically he's asking the seller if he can keep in contact, which is fine. However, before putting that, you know, it's why not go for the appointment, right? Why not say, hey, you know, yeah. the, 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 I, the property, you know, everything sounds good, just like you did. I'd really like to lay eyes on the property and meet with you. And, and just, and however you want, however you word it, that's gonna be based on however you word it, guys. Um, but the key is, why not go for the appointments, okay? And then the worst that seller is going to do is like, well, we're not ready. And then you backpedal a little bit and say, well, uh, what, I, what I'd like to do then is keep in contact with you. And then it's good to give all the information about your brokerage and the track record. But in reality, guys, the seller doesn't really care much about that at this point in the call. And so it, really the key thing is at this point in the call, because it's winding up, is to make sure that you have the email address. Make sure that they, they know that you're gonna send them an email. Make sure they, they know that you're, they may get a text message, that type of thing. And uh, th there's, there's nothing wrong with talking about the brokerage and giving all these stats, but you don't wanna get yourself into too much trouble because here's the thing, Tommy's a new agent, guys, and in reality, he's still working on his first property. So he doesn't wanna to get too much into that at this point in the, in the conversation, more building that relationship. So, so go for the appointment. And if not, uh, then, so the good way to say it was like, well, Mr. Seller, what I'd like to do is come by the property tomorrow or Sunday and just take a look at it and meet with you. Would 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. be best? 
why not go for it? What's the worst that they're going to do is say, well, maybe not now. Or, and then at that point, then you backpedal. Okay, well, what I'd like to do then is just send you an email with all of our information and then just keep in contact. Would that be okay? And that's the direction he's going with it now. So let's see how Tommy wraps it up. If it makes business sense to you, man, you know, I'd be really happy to uh, represent you in this and, you know, help you get it sold for top dollar. And it's good that he goes with that. However, he should have went for the, with that before asking if it's okay if we just stay in contact. You know what I mean, Tommy? There's nothing wrong with it because that to me is showing that Tommy's being a straight for, straight shooter. He's having some fortitude and he's saying, well, I'd love to be able to represent, on getting, get, represent you on getting this property sold. So he's basically asking for the listing, which is not which is not a problem. However, he should be asking for the appointment, a face-to-face, -face, and then when he's face-to-face -face -face going for the listing. But he's, he's priming the seller so that way the seller knows that he's just not trying to keep in contact and be buddy's buddy. Tommy wants to help him sell this property, and that's what he's getting at at this point. So that's good. Uh, well, sure. We'll, we'll think about that. Um, okay. We're not looking to do anything for um, you know, probably um, a year, but um, yeah. Great. Um, All right. Well, uh, can I get your name by chance? I don't know if I got your name. It's Nathan Draper. And at that point, what's the best email? Because that's one thing Tommy forgot to do. However, I, I guarantee you that he won't do that again, right, Tommy? <laughs> yeah, I'm not that much. What I suggested to Tommy before the call is when we get done here, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. He should, he's no problem just to do a quick follow up text. Hey Nathan, you know we spoke on Saturday. Um, it's Tommy. Just wanted to give you a quick shout. What's the best email for you? Or you know I was thinking what I'd like to do is come by the property sometime this week, shake your hand, and walk through and see some of the, of the work that you've done on it. Because here's the thing: there's nothing wrong with that. Once the the text conversation's initiated. Um, and if Mr. Draper retur returns the text, why not? And at that point, he may either say, yeah, why don't you come by Tuesday at 4 o'clock or 6 o'clock? Or he may say, well, we're just not quite ready for that. And then he sends the email. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, I encourage it, Tommy, that, you know, um, not only on uh, this call, but future calls, you know, make sure that you get that email. Uh, make sure that Nathan knows you're going to be keeping in contact. And, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with going for that appointment multiple times without pushing him too hard. Um, all you're doing is asking for a face-to-face -to, -face to be able to meet with him and see the property. You're not asking him to, to commit to anything. You're just asking him to meet with him, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's, let's, let's finish. Uh, let's let Tommy wrap it up here, and uh, we'll do a quick question and answers and uh, move forward here. Give me one moment because Tommy does have to, have to run here in a moment. I do know that, so I don't want to take too much of his time. Let me finish this call here. All right, Nathan. Well, you know, it's been a pleasure talking to you. You know, I, um, sometimes these, when I'm calling people, you know, you kind of get some uh, some people that really aren't so uh, so nice to talk to. And Tommy, Nathan doesn't need to know that, right? Yeah, you're right. To say the least. So I really appreciate you uh, having a good conversation with me. And um, yeah, let's uh, we'll stay in touch. And you know, and I, again, uh, what, is, what is your name? Again? My name is Tommy. Okay, so Nathan's going to remember you. What I suggest, Tommy, is after this call, shooting him that text, getting that email, and just wait, wait till he responds. And just, depending on how that text conversation goes, just fill him out. He may be willing to do a face-to-face -face with you on Tuesday or Thursday, and it may just be one that you continue to nurture, right? So yeah, exactly. overall, Tommy, you know, this is the first call re review we've, we've done. I wanted to, you know, give you some give you some props on that. You did a great job on the call. There's some things that you want to continue to do. Uh, and there's some things that you, you know, want to think about and may, may or may not continue to do. Um, there's some things you want to, you want to, you know, make it in that email address, things like that, possibly going for the appointment a few times in the call when he gives you good information. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and the non-words, want to be careful with that, and that's just natural. And the only way to reduce the ums and the ahs is continuing to cold call on a daily basis. And that stuff will, and I do it sometimes still too, guys. Like it happens. Um, and, and then also, when you ask a question, that's an open-ended question, which is Tommy's doing a great job doing. 
try to only ask that one question instead of answer a, a backing your question up with a question and a question and a question or giving them like a multiple choice ask that good question and then be quiet and let them talk that way you can you know the, the, let the conversation flow you know two ears one mouth the less that you're talking the better the more that uh, you have them talk and you're they're, they're opening up to you that's what you really want on these calls because they're really going to give you all of the information just like nathan did that you that you need to be able to continue with the call and continuing to ask the right questions and steering him towards that face-to-face -face appointment okay so does all of that make sense tommy what are your thoughts yeah i mean i jotted it down a bunch of things you know i i know that's like what i say uh and i'm too much and you know i can definitely work on it that's like much like it's just kind of me thinking and instead of me thinking out loud i just pause and just you know not you know say uh oh, um and definitely let them listen you know listen don't talk over them so much and yeah don't leave those questions like multiple choice you know make it a little simpler for them you know they don't want Exactly. Exactly. And Tommy, that's why I suggested that you turn on the call recording because yes, you and I are going to do some of these call reviews as time goes on. However, you can always just go back in and listen to the calls yourself. And when you're listening to yourself, you're going to be able to critique yourself and that's just going to get you better as well. Yeah, I mean, and I should have give you a disclaimer that these 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 review calls can and will be painful, bro. And even when you listen to it yourself, it's gonna be like, oh man, like you know. And just as long as you keep that open mind to where you know, we're I'm here to help you, and uh, I may not be a, a master or the best at this, but I've been there. I've heard what I've I've done these calls hundreds, if not thousands, of times, and I have that experience, and. Um, it's it's all it's all meant to just help you get better and as long as you continue to be able to soak stuff up like that and then on your call session tomorrow or later today when you get in there this type of stuff is going to come up again and you're gonna be like oh man jeremy said maybe try this or maybe i should just not say this and i should say this and that's just going to help you get better over time which is going to mean uh, from when you make more dials you're gonna have more conversations, like with Nathan. You're gonna have more leads that you turn into nurtures, and then you're gonna have a lot more appointments, which is gonna give you more opportunity to meet face to face with folks and be able to earn their business and list property, right? Yeah, exactly. So, real quick, Tommy, um, when you're calling Fizbos or if when you're calling people at all, uh, when somebody asks about, uh, you know the COVID-19 and no handshaking, how are you dealing with that? Or how, how is, what is your thought of dealing with that uh, COVID-19 situation? Honestly, I haven't gotten any of uh, the whole, you know, many issues with COVID-19 up where I'm living in Napa. It's a lot of, it's more been about the fire. Uh, I mean, if it's just today, I got on a phone call with someone in St. Helena uh, and they told me their house burned down. They withdrew it from the market because uh, the fire, fire was getting closed, and they just found out that their uh, house had burned down. And that, for me, that was probably one of the definitely more awkward situations I've been in when I was cold calling. But other than that, I haven't had. I mean, that Bellina's property, where you know they're saying uh, you know they're like living there, and they're not going to really think about listing until uh, COVID is over with. That's really the only one that I've had um, where COVID has come up. Okay, so situations like the fire, situations like when somebody says uh, so when, uh, Mr. Johnson's died, things like that, yes, it sucks. It's, you know, it's sad what people are doing, well, I mean, what's happening in the world today. However, the key with that type of situation is to be empathetic, not sympathetic. Show the empathy and then also talk about a solution right and so when it comes to the fire situation you know you want to be mindful you want to have that mindset when you're calling certain areas where you know that that's a possibility 
Like I've called areas when they just had a hurricane and they lost everything, right? And so it's more, yeah. it's more, uh, it's more. You're you're calling not necessarily just to get an appointment or help them sell their property, which which equals you calling about a commission. You're more calling to see how you can help. You're calling to see if there's anything that we can do to help. And truly, like Ricky says all the time, you're really calling to see what you can do to help. And if that means their house just burned down, you're you're offering resources. Is there any, any, do you need me to refer you to anybody to you know help uh, you know rebuild or um, or you know or do you have everything taken care of with your insurance? Like going away from the fact that you're trying to set an appointment to sell their property and truly trying to be a resource to them. For stuff that they need need help with, what they're dealing with in, in their life, you know, oh, you know, it's terrible that you lost your home. Have you have you gotten everything handled with insurance? Or did you guys need any help with that? That's a good way to be able to show that you're there to help them, not just get a commission from them. Exactly, because like what I like what I did with the fire, uh, the house thing, where the house burned down. You know, the wild is so so sorry. You know, that must be uh, really hard on you, and you know. It's, you know, I just say I'm a local realtor, trying to make myself as available to uh, anybody that I can. You know, the times we live in, people can, uh, you know, things can be a little crazy. And people will be really busy with, you know, helping friends and family pack up and move out. Is there anything I can do to help you? You know, just try to help them instead of, you know, tell them something. Yep. Or get the house sold. Exactly. And... It's, that's the whole relationships over transactions philosophy that Ricky Caruth teaches is the person who has market share is not necessarily the, the agent that has the, sells the most properties, has the most listings. In, in my opinion, and you'll learn this as time goes on, is it's that the agent or broker that has the most working relationships with the with homeowners in the area that he wants to sell property sell property in. and what i mean by uh, relationships is you're you're aligning yourself as the go-to realtor that they think of when they're going to buy or sell or refer you to a friend or a family member tommy quinn pops in their head uh you know jeremy marquez pops in their head ricky caruth pops in their head because you've aligned yourself as the go-to realtor that's who's going to have market share and if you create the most relationships with people in the areas that you want to sell property in, Bolinas, Petaluma, Santa Rosa, all these different areas, the more relationships you have as time goes on, because this is a lifelong business, the more transactions you're going to do by default because you're going to be helping more people, right? So um, as far as this live coaching call, we're probably going to wrap here on this when it comes to Facebook. I was going to talk a little bit about the power of Red X Geo Leads. Uh, Vulcan 7 neighborhood neighborhood search tools or coal area directory for just listed, just sold, open house call, circle prospecting. However, we're going to create a separate event for that and we'll go into that more on that call. Um, okay. Neil, what I would suggest, you know, with COVID-19, uh, because I know in California, I believe there's a form um, and, a, and a protocol that has to be followed. I don't know the exact name of it. Um, Tommy may, be, may know, um, but in California, I believe that there's a form that you uh, deliver uh, by email before coming out to showing that you're complying with all the COVID-19 uh, regulations, that type of thing, and yeah. and to show that you're complying with all that. Do you know what the name of that is, Tommy? Yeah, the P form, P form. Say again? P is a P form, it's spelled P-A-E. Okay. okay. Days, okay. Uh, you know, so, you know, so in the case you're going to go on a listing appointment, are you? So you're emailing that over to the seller before you come. Yeah. Okay. Or you, or you email the listing agent if you have a buyer. Okay. You know, that sort of thing. So every market in every state might be a little bit different, but Neil, to answer your question, you want to let them know that you're coming by and before you come. Um, yes, PEED form, exactly. Neil, Neil just typed it in the comments. So that's the best way to overstep that. Or you can just do it with a phone call. You can do it with a virtual meeting. If they're really that concerned about COVID-19, just start it with a call. You don't necessarily have to go face-to-face. -face. But Neil, I hope that answers your question, is you want to be able to utilize that PEED form and just let them know that you're fully compliant with all the COVID-19 regulations. Um, and of course, when you show up, show up with your mask on and uh, practice distancing, all that type of thing, 
uh, to be able to, because the whole idea with for sale by owners is you want to do whatever you can to get to, to get face to face. Okay, she said Los Angeles Fizbo seller. Okay, well, no, Neil, hopefully that answers your question. Of course, you and I are probably going to be having a coaching call here soon. We can talk about that more um, off of here by message, by text, by email, or during that coaching call. And guys, if you're watching this, if you're a realtor, a broker, an agent, if you're in sales and marketing, or if you're an assistant that works for real estate or mortgage folks, and you're looking to get some coaching, some training, and consulting about your own cold calling, that's what the, the page Power Prospecting is all about. Uh, hop on my calendar and we can talk more about that. I hope I was able to help you guys a little bit and some insight of uh, how you can apply my process, my system, my methods to your cold calling, have fun with it, and be able to get better results. Tommy, thank you again for giving us your time today, and you and I will talk more off of, off of here. Uh, anything, any, any last last things or uh, anything that you want to let, let the audience to know? Uh, just get on the dialer and keep calling. That's all I'm gonna do, and uh, mm. yeah, just appreciate your time, and I learned a lot in this uh, short, you know, one hour. The value I took from this is, uh, you know, that's awesome, Tommy. And that's the thing. That's my philosophy, guys. Just get on the phone. On to the next. Keep that positive mental attitude because here's the thing. Lots of dials. The more dials you have, the more conversations you're going to have. The more conversations you're going to have, the more leads you're going to create to nurture. The more leads you create to nurture, the more appointments, the more people you help. And by default, is more commission for you. Have a good day, guys. Shoot me a message or an email if you, I can help with anything at all. And thank you for tuning in. Neil, we'll talk off of here, okay, buddy?